Hi, my name is Rick Swanson. I am the owner and president of High Tech Systems. This is a training DVD for certifying contractors on the proper installation process of installing the high tech polyurea on all types of projects. We're going to show you the right process of assessing the floor, cleaning out the joints, and installing our high tech polyurea, and also finishing it off. We've come out to this warehouse here to uh, give you an example of how to install our product. The first thing you need to do is assess the project floor that you're going to be working on. Is it going to be polished? Is it going to be stained? Is it simply a floor that you're going to install our joint filler? Out here, this is an active warehouse where we have forklift tra traffic flowing over the floor and, and rolling over the joints. Therefore, we've got to make sure that we select the proper Shore A hardness of our polyurea joint filler. The three most popular Shore A hardnesses that High Tech manufactures is a 65, very, very uh, soft and pliable. Then we manufacture a 75, which has got a medium flexibility elongation. Out here on this project, we're going to use our PE85, which is our best hardness level for a warehouse floor. It's very important when you come out on a job to make sure you have the proper tools to get the job done quickly and efficiently. Uh, out here on this job, we're going to be using a very nice uh, clean-out saw that's got a vacuum attachment. Make sure you bring a very good vacuum that's able to vacuum up all the debris as you're cutting out the joint. Obviously, once we have the joints clean, we've got to use a, a polyurea pump that we manufacture to fill the joints. Just make sure you have all the tools so you can get the job done efficiently and correctly. All right, let's talk about when to fill the joints. If this is a new slab, you want to wait a minimum of 28 days. If you can wait longer, it's going to be better because that will allow the concrete to stabilize, the joint widths to stabilize. Also, if you have a choice, always fill the joints when the ambient temperature is at its coldest, either winter time or let's say at night. If this happens to be a store that's going to have the walls closed off, the windows, and have the air conditioning turned on, Wait till the uh, store has been stabilized and the joints have stabilized in their width before you fill. Uh, if you're working in a freezer or cold storage, the same thing holds true. Make sure that that freezer has been brought down to temperature before you fill the joints. If you're being forced to come on the job and fill the joints early in the uh, uh, process, like uh, 14 days after the slab has been poured or before the ambient temperature has been controlled on the slab, you need to tell the facility people and also the general contractor there could be a potential problem of you filling, being forced to fill too early, having the slab change and have the joints open up. The joint filler can only move so much. If it has to move too much, you might get some cohesive checking down the center or maybe some adhesive checking on the sidewall. So it's very important for you to protect yourself by explaining this uh, to the general contractor and the facility people you ask me to come in too early, I might have to come back and charge you to fix the, uh, fix the joints. Also, if you're gonna be polishing the floor, very important to fill the joints first before you go through your polishing process. On every floor, it's very important to take in consideration the traffic that's flowing over it, which will help determine the depth of fill as well as the hardness level of the joint filler. Out here on this project, we're in a warehouse, so we're going to use our PE85 and we're going to cut the joints down one and one quarter inch and we're going to fill to a minimum depth of one inch, possibly inch and a quarter. Always use a diamond blade when you're resawing out a joint. On this job we're using the US saw, uh, eight inch uh, diamond blade. These joints are a little bit wide so I've doubled up my blades in the saw here. So we get a nice clean cut on both sides of the, the joint, have nice squared corners. Sometimes you have an existing joint filler out on a project that needs to be cut out. We find the U.S. saw Tiger Blade works the best. Because of the width of this joint, where we have doubled up uh, two Tiger Blades on this saw, now we're going to cut this out. Mm -hmm. 
After sawing out the joint, now it's very important to vacuum the debris up. All right, we've taken our saw, we've sawed out the joint. We want to verify that we've cut it the right depth, which is inch and a quarter. We've got that right there. So now we're ready to fill. Occasionally, the requirements for the depth of fill is less than the joint depth. In order to control the joint depth, you could either use sand, which I do not recommend because it's very difficult to control the depth and also dirty. The best process is use a closed cell back rod with a back rod insertion tool to set the back rod the appropriate depth. The purpose behind doing the cutting, the vacuuming, is to make sure that we have good sidewall adhesion of our polyurea joint filler. The high-tech material has a long open time, therefore it drops into the joint wet, starts to bond to the sidewalls, but you still need to make sure that the joints are nice and clean and vacuumed uh, and also dry. So that's very important to have good sidewall adhesion. To minimize the chance of a shadow on both sides of the joint, it's a good idea to use soap and rub it on both sides of the joint to form a bond breaker so when you fill the joint, the overfill doesn't have a chance to uh, penetrate into the concrete. Very important if the slab is open, if it doesn't have a densifier. It's a good process also if you have a stained floor and you don't want to have any chance of the overfill showing up on both sides of the joint. So we manufacture this soaper tool where you're able to install two pieces of soap rub it on both sides of the joint at the same time, forms a nice, easy to remove, uh, solid bond breaking film. We're gonna go through the basic steps of filling the joint. Out here on the job site, we're gonna use our SB2005 machine six and a half gallons on each side, so it's easy to pour your five gallon uh, kit into it. A static mixing nozzle, end of the manifold, on off, speed control built into the handle, very, very fast, efficient system. To minimize the noise and make it much simpler, we're using our battery inverter system. We've also come up with a new quick disconnect for charging up the battery so you don't have to undo the uh, lines back into the battery. I'm going to show you a double pass method using our machine. Since this is a warehouse with forklift traffic, our Shore A hardness of 85 is necessary. So we've shipped out here our high tech PE85 untinted. We've selected grizzle gray as the appropriate color. We will mix that into the poly all side and then load that into our SB2005 machine. We have our PE85 loaded into our SP2005 machine. Take off the retaining nut that holds the nightcap. I have the uh, battery turned on. I'm going to go to a purge bucket. I'm going to go to our switch. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to bring up the speed. I'm going to start pumping out the oil that, and the grease that's in the system right now until I start to see A side and B side coming through the manifold. I see a good flow. I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to take and install our static mixing nozzle. I find it's a good idea to wire a purge bucket to the machine so it's always with you. Now I'm going to go ahead and shoot into that same purge bucket. Turn it on. See the flow. Make sure I have a good mix. Color's coming out good, good flow. I'm going to turn it off, come to our joint. I'm going to show you the double pass method. 
Remember, this is the way that we control the overfill. I'm going to turn on the pump. And I'm going to fill fast the first time. So I'm choking off the bottom of the joint. And then when I go to fill the second pass, I'll be very, very careful on the amount of overfill and therefore the waste. We've done our first pass. Now I'm going to do the second pass and I'll be able to control the overfill very easily. Occasionally you might have a very short section of uh, joint to fill. So the, the easiest way is just to use our 22 ounce cartridge. Uh, we can put any color in our cartridges. We're doing grizzle gray, so we put grizzle gray into this cartridge. This cartridge was partially used on another project. The balance is usable out on this job just by resealing it. So a uh, very nice process using the cartridges by being able to reseal and reuse on another job. Very important to shake the cartridge before you install the mixing nozzle. If it's a cool day, cold day, you want to get it warmed up before you start to shake it. It's uh, like shaking up a can of paint. The ball bearing helps mix, mix up the poly all side, mix up the color. Shake it for about 60 seconds. Then you pop off the uh, cap, exposing the uh, A side and B side. Screw on the mixing nozzle. And there's two different tools to be, that you can use to dispense the cartridge. You can use the manual hand tool, which is easily available, or we find this battery tool to be very efficient. Uh, it's very fast. You pull this back, you load in the cartridge, you push this forward, lock it in place, start to gun it. You'll start to see it coming out of the nozzle. Purge a little bit off to the side, come to your joint that's prepared, cleaned out, ready to go. Now you can walk it backwards like this and fill this joint very fast and easily. Once you're done using the cartridge for this section, simply pull it back, take the cartridge out, unscrew the mixing nozzle, Go ahead and recap it and save it for the next job. If the joints are not dry, this is what you'll end up with. As you can see right here, the polyurea has reacted with the water that was down in the joint and caused carbon dioxide gas, which causes it to swell. Very, very important to make sure that the joints are dry before you fill them. If you're not sure if they're dry, my suggestion is to do a double pass method. Fast one time, that will take care of the moisture at the bottom of the joint, and then finish it at the top and you won't see any issues at all. We're ready to shave. Very important to have a sharp blade. We manufacture an extended handle four inch wide shaver. You've gone to all the trouble to clean out the joints, uh, shoot the polyurea in, very important to do a good job shaving the joints. I'm going to show you the proper method and then also how to take care of uh, cutting on a cross joint. So you want to start and make sure that the blade is at an angle and when you start shaving you want to shave with one motion. So you get started, have it at an angle and you can see how easy it is to shave. Just keep it moving along. You can see the soap that I had put down coming up with the uh, material. As you can see, it's very, very easy to shave. Now I'm going to show you there's absolutely no shadowing. If you take a look down there next to the joint, beautiful filled joint, no shadow at all. Now we purposely overfilled the joint here to show you how much more difficult it is to shave when you have tremendous overfill. All right, here's the cross section. Let me show you the proper method for cutting this so you don't make a mess out of it. You want to bring your shave in from all four sides. This side, third side. Come in from the fourth side. Then when you have all of them together, you want to just finish it off at a slight angle. Now you have a nice, beautifully finished 
cross section right there. Remember I said with one motion, you don't want to be jabbing, jabbing, jabbing. And also as you're cutting this, make sure the blade is at an angle so you're slicing it. You don't want to put it at a 90 degree to the joint and, and have, a, have it possibly chatter on you. So have it at an angle and move it nice and smooth. You'll get a beautiful cut if you do it this way. This is a perfect example of a sinker. This is where uh, a double pass method was not used or backer rod was not used and the installer came through and, and filled this low. Now you need to come back and fix this. I'm going to show you the process of fixing this sinker. This sinker needs to be cut down to a dimension at least a quarter inch deeper in order to accept new polyurea. I'm going to use a tiger blade to cut out the low spot in the joint filler. After we have recut the sinker, we're ready to refill this section. In order to do the job right, it's essential to carry out all the steps we've shown you. So if you encounter any problems out on a job site, things that you've never seen before, make sure you reach out to us. Give us a call, 800-454-5530. We'd be very happy to help you out with any issues that you have and make sure that you get this job done correctly.